hi in today's video we are going to be looking at how we can add flying fabrics to our images in adobe photoshop this is twisted creative a library manager is my name if it's the first time on this channel please do me a favor do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button not only by hitting that subscribe button also ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the next video without wasting much time let's get into it we are going to be attaching these four fabrics to our image to see how it's going to look on our image this is the photoshop and this is the image we are going to be using i believe that there are other backgrounds but let's do with this one and see how it's going to look i i just get this image down like this to show you that this is how it was that is before then we can create the after so i have the background separately here with the image separate here so we are going to be starting by using both of them exactly like this the image has been selected already let's go to our move to if you look at it it has been removed from the background already we are going to be adding our fabrics so let's bring in our fabrics this is one and this is number four we have to drag them to photoshop we're going to open them in photoshop okay let's take this one as the first one we are going to take this guy like this and drop it on the image spread it if you are using holding shift stuff you can hold your shift and spread then we have it like this so if you take a look at it now you notice that these colors are not the same we have to creatively add colors to this to make it blend to this other one We're going to be using our control b for color balance then with this we can adjust to add red to maybe to the ending let's see to the ending we have plus 100 here then we have minus 13 for yellow so hit ok then the next one should be let's take it like this and drop on the image and we have it like this let's take it that this is ok then hit ok and use your control b for color balance this 100 then take this to minus 13 minus 13 then hit ok so we have the color like is the same we are going to be using our eraser tool to erase part of this thing to blend it up with the one that has been on ground we have to go to eraser tool we have to right click on this and choose eraser tool so we can use it to to clean up to match the original image you can increase or reduce your brush size So let's increase our opacity and flow so as to get it done quick. So we have to select the other one and do the same erasing so as to blend it up with the original fabric. We are going to be bringing the next one which is this should be the next one so we have to take this and pick it to open it here okay let's rotate and lift it up like this So like this is okay, we just have to hit okay. We have to send it to the back of the image. So it has to be under the image layer. So we have it like this. So you can see what we are seeing now. So we are going to be correcting this area by removing this edge here. The extra edge here, we are going to be removing it. So we have to pick up our eraser tool and increase our brush size and carefully remove it. And let's take it to the image and see where it's going to be matching with so we can place it this way hit ok let us not forget that we have not corrected the color of this layer we have to use our control b to bring out the color balance and we'll take here to 100 and here to yellow to minus 13 then hit OK. Now we have the color blended. So we have to take this other one, this last one we just brought in. We have to use our control B to bring out the color balance. The, the 
red should be 100 then the yellow should be minus 13 minus 13 hit ok so we have it blended up we are going to be blending this layer 4 by using our eraser to erase part of this layer 1 to blend it up so we are going to erase like this to blend it up this is what we have now the next thing we are going to be doing now is we are going to add shadows to make it more realistic because it's just like it's floating on the air we don't want it to be floating on the air so we need to put some shadows the shadow is going to be under all of this then let's start from here we are going to be creating the shadow above this background layer so we are going to click on this layer for copy which is going to allow us add an empty layer by clicking this plus that is going to be on top is going to be under every other layer apart from the background then we have to pick our brush tool and there's something we need to put into consideration we are not going to be using black as our shadow because if you are trying to place shadow under this red fabric it's going to be looking like reddish shadow so we'll go to our foreground color we'll first change it to red then we are going to take something very dark from the red we are going to take something close to black that is not black but it's going to be reddish so we are going to take it for the first layer which is layer 5 we are going to softly place it under the lifted areas like this so this lifted areas like this so the next thing we are going to be looking at the area that is that landed directly on the floor which is going to be a very tiny and thick shadow so we are going to create another empty layer it can be on top of this layer also so we are going to create reduce our brush size and draw shadows behind it so all those areas that are directly on the floor we are going to capture them by dragging this tiny shadow around them you can check this video for shadows if you don't understand what we are doing now okay let's go you can drag it for those area that is directly on the ground directly on the ground as you can see i'm leaving this area so i have to start from continue from here okay since this stuff ended here we can go and can select this layer pick our stamp tool and increase or reduce the brush size to fit the area then use our alt to sample then we we'll extend it by clicking so we have to sample and fill sample and fill so this is what we have now we have successfully placed this thing on the floor so you can also go to this stuff you can also select this stuff you can nudge you can take your move to and nudge up to take it inside more to take it inside more then you can also reduce the opacity if applicable then have it like this so taking a look at this stuff now it is looking more realistic you can create another empty layer for shadow on top of this layer six then we can go ahead select the layer six and go ahead and use click on this plus icon to add an empty layer we'll zoom in and take our brush tool and increase our brush size we can also reduce the opacity and flow then drag it around to suit what we are seeing there then this area is going to be a little bit darker then reduce your brush size and you can do the tiny area then after doing this you can go to the opacity let's check if there is any other lifted area like that make sure it's layer 7 you can go to opacity and reduce the opacity in a way so this is what we have as the shadow let's place these shadows in a group and see the before and after we have to click on this layer 7 and hold our shift to click on the layer 5 then we have layer 7 6 and 5 selected then we have to use our ctrl g to place them in a group if we disable this and enable it we've gone this far the next thing we are going to be doing is that we are going to match this background to this image because if you look at this stuff now that we are doing you notice that 
the fabric is reddish and the image is also reddish and the background is having a perfect white balance then what we do we are going to be adding some red to this background to make it look like the image or make it look like the image was shot there so how can we go about that we can go about fixing that by clicking on the background then go to adjustment layer and choose color balance we are going to be looking at the image to balance the background then we are going to be taking our red up as you can see it's making more sense let's take add a little yellow then more red so i believe it should be okay like this because if you throw light like a flashlight to a red fabric it's going to be generating red around your image so we have it a kind of reddish like this okay the next thing we do here is for us to add something on top we're going to select the top layer and click on the plus mark to add a new layer we'll go to our foreground color and change it to pure black and hit ok with that empty layer selected we are going to pick our paint bucket and click on the box to fill it with black go to our marquee tool and choose elliptical marquee tool so we're going to drag around so we are going to drag around the middle to create this look here this elliptical shape here then we are going to right click and feather with 300 or thereabouts then we have to push our delete button once then this is what we have you use our ctrl d to deselect then go to your opacity and reduce your opacity this is going to make it look like a controlled light you know when you have all those band doors on lights and it is controlled so we have it like this we are going to hold our alt down and click on this last eye icon here and this is before this is after this is before this is after we can further go ahead and pick some stuff from the original fabric from the model and use it to garnish the rest part of the fabrics so we are going to go in there and take something like that it's like let's see the direct the area that is going to be okay okay let's take this can I just make a little selection of this like using your lasso tool and turn this thing around so we have it selected you right click and feather with two then hit okay make sure the image is selected use your control c to copy use your control v to paste then we have this little thing selected we don't have to use our auto select what we have to do so we are going to create a group for this we are going to use ctrl g to place that stuff in a group then we have the group here then we have to select this and start duplicating use ctrl j to duplicate and place use ctrl j to duplicate and place Some of these things are appearing under this under these uh, fabrics here so we have to bring them up by taking this group up and drop it here so we have the group on top then we have to continue using ctrl j and place ctrl j place So as you can see now we finally customize this test type for this model let's close this group and check the before and after this is before this is after this is before this is after let me let's zoom in and see this is this is before this is after this is before this is after let's take a look at the general before and after again let's hold down our alt and click on this image this is before and this is after 
So this is before and this is after. Isn't that amazing? I believe that is it for today. If you find it interesting, helpful, and useful, let us know in the comment section telling us the area it has helped, the area it has not, and the area it would have helped. If you find anything interesting in this video, please hit that like button. Like I said earlier, if you are new on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not only by hitting that subscribe button, also ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the next video. Thanks for watching today's video. Creative people keep on creating. Please stay creative. For now, bye. See you in the next one.